thank you for your question. Um, we normally finalise the playing squad towards the end of February, March, to, which allows us to advise players who may not be uh, contracted for the following year or players that are being released. Um, but in the current circumstances, we, with injuries and a lot of uh, call-ups to national squads, there's always some movement in the playing squad, and you would have seen that this year where we had to bring in Pat Howard, Niall Cronin, Seb Guinezu to cover injuries that we have, but the hope would be that you'd have it finalised by the end of March each year, but it doesn't always work out as clear as you would like it. Alan, um, there is always a deficit, I suppose, in talent, no matter what level you're performing at. Um, within Ireland itself, we probably suffer from having a much smaller number of A schools than would be uh, in existence in Ulster and it's particularly in Leinster. But um, the positions you referred to, is particularly around centre and tight head prop, we have addressed these issues over the last number of years by starting a, a front row school under the name of the 123 Club that's run by specifically by Marcus Horn and, and Connor Toomey, who are expert in those areas. We have unearthed a number of very good young props that have managed to represent Ireland at age grade level, but taking the step up to the next level has been uh, is, a, is a bigger challenge, which you will see with the likes of Dave Kilcoyne and James Cronin are two of the people who have come through that system recently and, and both have managed to play for Ireland. The tight head position obviously is a more demanding and challenging position for people to play in. But um, we have identified one or two players in that year and one of them will represent Ireland this year hopefully at um, under 18, under 19 level. The midfield area has been also addressed where we've had a poor supply of quality midfield players but we have a Bex a clinic that goes on once a week now to try and identify and solve this issue, this issue and also around the scrum half and out half area so it is a constant challenge but we are addressing the issue. Michael, thank you for the question on the tight head prop position. First of all, the policy on this is determined by the IRFU at national level and is determined by the requirements for the, nation, for the national team. Um, there is, at this point in time, there isn't any policy for any of the Irish provinces to recruit established tight head props who have, pre, who have played international rugby previously. There is scope to bring in a project player in this position, but with the permission of the IRFU but they would much prefer that we produce our own players and it's something that we're looking at. So um, I don't envisage any big signings in this area in, for us or for any of the other provinces. And you will notice one or, one or two of the other provinces have gone down the project route in this area with the, with the, I suppose, the permission of the IRFU. Kevin, thank you for that question. Um, I suppose the important thing to point out is the international landscape in recruiting players as in the Jean de Villiers and Doug Howlett category has changed a lot over the last number of years. First of all, Southern Hemisphere countries, New Zealand, South Africa in particular and Australia are stri striving very hard to retain their international standard players and their salaries have now become much more competitive and on a par with the Northern Hemisphere if they need to retain them. In addition, the um, New Zealand Rugby Union have introduced a sabbatical for some of their top players that allows them to go to Japan, which is a new market with uh, plenty of money available. In addition, in France, you have a lot of new private investors that have put up the price, that put up the market price, and the tax rate in France is much more attractive than it is in Ireland. So uh, recruiting players of that nature is a much bigger challenge now than it was a number of years ago. Uh, Jason, um, we have been, a, we are operating in a very difficult financial environment at the, pre at the present moment. Um, we have been showing, our recent accounts have shown a deficit, but with the help of the IRFU and with our own internal reorganization, our plan is to eliminate the deficit in the near future. We also have formed a new commercial board, a non-executive commercial board under the chairmanship of Niall Fitzgerald to help us eliminate this deficit and to work on new income streams. 
the second part of your question was how we would compete with the English and the French in the future. Um, that will always be, I say with the word, with difficulty. Uh, I suppose the money in the French and English market is very much determined by their television deals. Both countries have signed uh, much improved television deals that have made us, uh, has been a challenge for us in the Pro 12 area, despite the fact that Sky have come on board and, has, and have improved the television deal for, for the Pro 12. I think with the new deal that will be coming up for, for the English clubs through BT in two years' time, each club will get, will get at least six million per club from, from television alone, and in France it's much higher, so that gives you an idea of what we're competing with. Okay, Gareth, thank you for the question. Um, recruitment in Ireland has really operated on a different basis than in the UK, or especially particularly in England than in France. At any time in Ireland, we probably only have one or two positions that we're recruiting players for. And this is determined, first of all, by the fact you're only allowed five non-Irish eligible players, one of which has to be a project player. And secondly, in Munster, Leinster and Ulster, we are only allowed one player in each particular position that we recruit in. So our recruitment needs are always at a much lower level than what will be required in France and in England. Just for your information, I spoke to a club in France this year, this week, just to give, and they are recruiting 16 players for next year, whereas our recruitment might be down to one or two players. Within Munster itself, the recruitment process starts with the head coach and the management team, where we first of all identify where we'll have a vacancy for the future, and then working with the head video analyst, they will identify players that will be likely candidates for those positions. We then source, try, we then source who the player's representative is, and see about their availability or what their contractual status is. And um, our management have gone abroad to visit some players when the opportunity arises or if it's deemed necessary. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's a much smaller process than what you will have in England. And I note your question where you mentioned about Dusty Hare with Northampton. His job is, uh, is a much broader uh, brief than what anyone in Ireland would have, and he's also recruiting for their academy and for the long term, and they have much more scope. So um, at the present moment, while there will be a smaller group within our management responsible for ultimately for recruitment, we don't see a requirement for a specific, uh, like what you were referring to maybe as a head scout. John, I read your query about the facility and the services that we provide at Thoman Park, and I'm not sure if you're referring to Irish Independent Park as well. Um, obviously, like all of us, you're a person that enjoyed the facilities in the old Thoman Park and the more relaxed uh, atmosphere that, uh, that was in existence there, but um, everyone has to move on and we have to plan and look to the future. I think it was a huge achievement for us to get Thoman Park built at the time we did and it will stand uh, it will stand as a good as a good uh, decision in the future i know some of the issues that you raised about the atmosphere which is uh, acceptable and as happens in a lot of sta stadia stadiums you have to allow for days when you won't have a full house this year we have improved the dugout bar with the appointment of a new bar manager and we have the fan zone plaza with lots of food stalls in it as well. And we have the Bank of Ireland fun zone for kids and the food, the food is available on both sides of the stadium. And we would like to think that we have improved it and we're constantly looking to improve this area. And um, there is a customer feedback facility for people as well attending the games and I'd hope that you'd participate in that and that we would be, that we can improve as a result of the feedback that we'd get from yourself and, and from other supporters.